Hello everyone and welcome to another episode for Mia Dev Radio. Welcome Rory, how are you? I'm, I'm incredibly uh, happy to be here straight from South Africa, Johannesburg. We flew here and this week we've done so many incredible community conference and uh, events that uh, I want to I feed back to you and just thank you Hatim for hosting me in uh, Microsoft UAE Dubai. That's uh, I can't tell you how happy I am to have you here. And the impact we have added plus the people we have met over this week, it's, uh, it's amazing. Like, this is the best experience of my life being in this, uh, in this role. So, Rory, uh, thank you for coming on our show, first of all. Uh, usually, we run this podcast to help budding developers, bring them into the communities, and... We talk more about, you know, from your experience and your tips and tricks, how they can actually go ahead and, you know, contribute more towards the community. And as well, they get to learn from us, right? So let's start with, can you introduce yourself and tell me more about you and our audiences? I'm going to speak to the camera so you, yes. you, you can <laughs> see me, but um, I'm also going to look at you occasionally. So hi, my name is Rory Pretty. And I'm a principal developer advocate for Microsoft. And what developer advocates do is that we empower developer communities um, to be able to do more in the Microsoft ecosystem. And I'm actually a group of 90 plus developer advocates that uh, really involve ourselves with the 40 million people that call Microsoft home and look to us to really guide them through the solution. Now, I've been in IT for 23 years now, That's and right. I've been a developer for 15 years, and I've been in developer relations for 10 years. So it's been a really wonderful and wow journey for me as I progress through this, though. But I've learned a few things about my career, and I, I know that you said you've got some questions on where do I start uh, with my career journey. Yes. So uh, before we get into that, this is an exciting journey which you showed. And I wanted to ask you a bit more about, uh, as a developer advocate, what do you think is the current need of the R? Like in the community, how and what is your role as a developer advocate? First of all, a developer advocate needs to be a person that people trust. They need to have a reputation of trustworthy and also be a very good public speaker with a good social following that people can say, wow, I can watch this person for 30, 40 minutes or I can uh, read their content and it's incredibly uplifting and enabling content. Correct. So that's, that's something that myself as a content creator and an influencer, I have to be on the top of my game. And it really comes down to how well can I research a topic. So we, we sat today with startups and we went through the new uh, Azure OpenAI and I had to go myself and really say, I have to learn this topic not only well enough to be able to uh, know it myself, but well enough for individuals to trust that I can help them uplift their experience in the topic also. So developer advocates really are a scale. In the center of the scale is the trust that I mentioned, and that is Microsoft runs on trust. Um, and then on the uh, left-hand side of the scale is education, so their formal education, relevance, so cutting-edge technologies and, and being able to have uh, a view of zeitgeist, so the current pulse of society, education, relevance, and experience. And experience, they look to me to say, okay, um, can you sh please show us real-world examples? On the other side of the scale is the social. And developer audiences also look to that because the social is um, made up of community. Yes. You, you drive many communities, and they want to be part of a community. Um, and then there's culture. We're nerds. Developer subculture, you know, it's when I say who's the main character of Big Bang Theory, uh, it's Leonard. Yeah, it's not Sheldon, it's Leonard. And, but we have that kind of camaraderie around that. And then mentorship and the scale. Now, if you just have the 
uh, the self side of the scale, then you're going to weigh out the, um, the scale and you're going to burn out. Mm -hmm. That's why a developer advocate in partnership with the, uh, the, the community leads, make sure that you can get the scale really well adjusted and have a fruitful and um, really meaningful career. That is amazing. Like, to be honest, I have never heard so much details about you know, what a developer advocate does. That's great, Rory. So uh, one thing I liked what you said is when you go and present about a technology, you learn it in such a way that you actually set up trust to your audiences. And that is exactly where the community plays a big role over here. Because in the community, when you are good with something, you go and present that to the community, right? And that's, that's one of the essence of being a part of the community and sharing your own knowledge of what you know exactly, and then you share it with the community. Now, coming up to your story, right? And that is the most inspiring part of our talk today. I want to know where did you start? How did you start? And how did you reach to this stage where you are right now? Mastery is the belief that talent lies in all of us. At three years old, I wanted to serve. I wanted to reach out to the many, many different aspects of the human experience and serve them in a way that I understood my abilities to do that. And through my early childhood experiences, my uh, high school experiences, and then my, my university experiences, I understood that servant leadership meant that I would sacrifice my time to make sure that I could lead. So I started um, programming 2001 Wow, and, long back. And I remember that I understood that this was a way to have servant leadership because I could create ecosystems and, and products and uh, processes that allowed me to give of myself and create um, uh, systems and architectures that supported other individuals. Um, and then as I progressed through that, I also acknowledge that to, to truly serve was also to be able to educate and entertain. So education and edutainment is a way to be able to reach and grab someone's attention through, um, uh, uh, through maybe humorous or heightened delta, uh, waves of, delta waves of engagement, brain waves of engagement, to make focus on a specific subject. And that is the, the cornerstone of any developer relations experience would tell you that you need to meet the developer where they are. Got so, it. so I meet the developer where they are, and we've, we've traveled around Dubai this week. Yes. Everywhere, we've been on a ship, we've been on the harbor, we went far, we went near, and we, we served, really. Yes. I noticed you there, you're setting up equipment, and I was, I was speaking though. And at every given time, we gave of ourselves. Okay. We gave and we sacrificed our time and our being to actually give ourselves. And that's really a commitment that I have to this career and something that I pride myself in uh, being able to do. Now at Microsoft, I speak around the world. I've recently spoken at the United Nations. I've spoken at the EU Parliament, at uh, customers and community events. And at any time, when I go into that event, I say to myself, be your genuine self. Don't be the self that they want you to be. But show them that you're being uh, genuine because that's really trust. If you don't know it about a topic, tell them, wait, I will learn about this topic and I'll come back, to, come you. back to you. And that's something also that you need to have as a developer advocate. It's the, the boldness to say that if you are not able to do something, you need to tell them that because reputation is everything. everything. Correct. That is great. So when you actually reach to this position, have you been in the community or been in the developer space before? Microsoft found me when I was actually helping a competitor drive their local community. Okay. And I remember they, they phoned me and they said, okay, we're going to make you an offer. Please accept our offer. And I said, no, Microsoft, I'm, I'm actually more embedded in the, the competitor's community. And they said, Rory, you need to understand core to Microsoft's ethics is the, uh, the belief that Microsoft is a uh, family and also treats 
their developers as part of that family. And I, I, I started actually searching about Microsoft, and one of their cornerstones is the belief that accessibility uh, is empowerment. And I, I remember saying, but this company is the scales real center that I can actually help the developer community grow their both sides of the scale. And I joined them, and it's been the best decision I've ever made because it's allowed me to center myself and empower myself and partner with Microsoft and build communities around the world. You know, I remember setting up the African communities and I helped nearly 20 Africa communities come onto the Azure tech groups. And they, they said, Rory, we don't have money to start a meetup group, but we don't. And then I said, come, come to Microsoft. I'm going to show you what we can do. And we built a end-to-end -end Africa Azure group, uh, community out of the trust that they had on me. That is great. You being an accessibility champ, tell us more about how you bring accessibility to the community. What we noticed at Microsoft is that um, when customers start to focus on, sorry, when companies start to focus on their customers and not just deliver products into the wild, they create an innovative mindset. So instead of saying, uh, I'm just going to design this application for 70% of our customers and the rest of the 30% won't be able to use it. They rather do inclusive design um, uh, sessions to say, I'm going to be the customer, let's just say, if it's visually impaired or uh, if it's um, uh, auditory or uh, navigation impaired, I'm going to pretend I am that customer, become that customer, and then I'm going to try and use my system being that customer. And once they do that, they wait, wait a second, the, this can't be used by a visual impaired person, but at the same time, it may not be able to be used by the silver generation, the generation yeah. with the highest expendable income, which is the over 70 generation. So we show them how to solve for one and extend to many. And then we have our toolkits, the Accessibility Insights uh, toolkits, our uh, Azure DevOps uh, pipeline tool chains, and also our inclusive design toolkit that show them how to design for these customers. And we've proven that it's an increase in revenue, it's an increase in innovation, and at the same time, it allows me to present to audiences in their nature and natural language. I've yes. presented in uh, Arabic, in uh, Swahili, I've spent, uh, presented in Zulu and Afrikaans. Um, just because the same technology that creates innovation through accessibility also allows us to create innovation through AI. Yes, yes. That, that is so good to hear. Now, for audiences, I want to understand how they can actually go ahead and join these communities where they can actually pitch more or learn more about accessibility. Great question. So first, you need to become part of the Azure Tech uh, tech groups. That's okay. that's uh, the first thing that you need to do, and it's easy to go into meetup.com and join um, those tech groups. At the same time, you'll see that in those tech groups, they all have a code of conduct and also accessibility accommodations. And you can just email these individuals and say, I have an accessibility requirement. And it's cornerstone to the Microsoft ethos to accommodate these individuals for the, their accessibility uh, requirements. Also, all of our technology allow you, when you go online, you can see captions. Yeah. You, you can get um, ad, 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 not only voice captions, you can get auditory help. And if you go in and you download um, Microsoft Windows, there's a nice little setting uh, called um, caption. Yes. It will actually caption anything and that comes into Microsoft Windows for you in any language that you want. That is great. That's new to hear. <laughs> and if you want more information on how to get started with the Accessibility Design Toolkit, you can go to microsoft.com forward slash accessibility. And okay. we have our tool set and also our design uh, strategies there that you can actually go in and get started. That is great, and that's amazing. I would also do one thing is, Rory was talking about the Azure Tech Groups. I will go ahead and put that link in the show descriptions, as well as join the Azure uh, Azure Network, which will help you to, you know, to learn more about what are the accessibility events happening around you, and join, join us in that. So you will see a small barcode on the screen, go ahead and scan that barcode and you can go ahead and register to that. And I learned a lot from you, Rory. I am I'm so happy that we could do all this together. And 
for our audiences as well that you know they know where to start in terms of accessibility in the community so thanks a lot for coming on our show and uh, giving us this knowledge thank, thank you. you thank you much for uh, hosting me at thanks a lot Rory. thank you everyone for joining us have a good day bye bye